Okay, so uh, morning. We have a special gift uh, that God has sent us today. And if you weren't here last year, you're in for a real treat. If you were here last year, you know that it's going to be a treat. So uh, the thing is, uh, we have Team Challenge here today. And we're going to learn a lot about what Team Challenge actually does and the help that it offers people. Uh, more importantly is, uh, up until last year, I thought Team Challenge was just for teens. Guess what? We're no different now. And uh, Brother Fred and I were able to put a lot of research uh, into uh, what they do. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into detail because I'm sure that that's part of the program that we're going to uh, see today. Uh, but I will let you know that uh, the testimonies that you're going to hear today, they're going to affect your lives if it's not already affected your life. And I dare say that a lot of us in here and pretty much everybody in here, uh, it is going to be real familiar with uh, the testimonies we're here today. And uh, we all know how hard it is to stand up and talk about how our lives were before God showed up. And if you read your Bible, and I'm not going to quote verses or anything today because I'd like for you to kind of research it and find it, but the Bible talks about giving testimonies. Yes. The Bible talks about saying what God has done for you openly. So when we hear about someone's past, the past does not define the person. The path or the past just shows where the person was when God intervened. And everybody that we have here can, can relate to that. And I know that from listening to everybody that we have here in the past, or that we have here in the congregation. So, with that being said, I'd like to open us up in prayer, and then we're going to let them just get right to business because uh, we, we've got food planned for them. They do have uh, material, or they do have some items in the, the back room, and I, I will say that that is stuff that they've made. And it goes for their ministry. And we talked about last Sunday about what we were going to have this Sunday. And there's a lot of churches that will say you can't sell stuff in the church. Well, no, you can't make a mockery of God by making a profit off of God's people Amen. and putting it in your own pocket. Uh, we will support ministries uh, when they come in and do stuff for us because God supports us in our ministry. So I want you to look at it in a way of the old uh, mindset and a lot of the ways that we grew up about people having to stand outside and put their booths outside to do things like that. That's not what it's about. These guys ain't making a profit off of it. They don't go in their pocket. It goes into their ministry, and their ministry's a good thing. But they do have to have financial support for that ministry. So uh, with that being said, we don't have to think about that no more. But just uh, when you go back there and see it, I'm sure they'll explain uh, how things are done uh, with, with the things that they brought. So uh, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for what you've blessed us with today, Lord. The, the young ladies that are here that, that are, are, are to share their testimony with us and uh, uh, share their songs with us, Father God. And Lord, we know it's about iron sharpening iron, Lord. They're, they're coming here. To, to show us, Father God, what God has done in their lives. And Lord, we hope that they, they can see uh, in us what you've done in our lives, Father God. Lord, we pray that they can see us as Christ-like as they're coming to show us that they're Christ-like, Father God. We just thank you for everything that you've done in our life, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you be with each and every one of these ladies uh, as they give their testimony, Father God. And Lord, just let them know that here they're in your house so they're at home. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everything you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Well, it's good to be 
being in the house of the Lord. I know that. And I'm in the presence of God, and I just love that you guys have just welcomed us, and we appreciate that, guys. My name is Tina, and I'm one of the choir directors at Double Challenge Women's Ministries. Um, who in here, in one, one way or another, has been affected by addiction? And who here has ever heard of Teen Challenge before? Awesome. Uh, Teen Challenge was started in 1958 by the late David Wilkerson. He was a pastor whose heart grieved with those lost in addiction. The whole Teen Challenge story can be found in his book, The Cross and the Switchblade, which later turned into a movie. Through this journey, Pastor Wilkerson came face to face with the cold, harsh realities of addiction. And the truth is, these realities, they have only gotten worse. Um, in today's society, uh, reality is the average age for first-time marijuana use is only 14 years old. Reality is, one in five inmates in the U.S. are incarcerated for drugs. Reality is, 2.5 million Americans, they die annually from a drug or alcohol overdose. Reality is, the enemy, he has come to steal, to kill and destroy. Do you want to know what reality is? Reality is leaving your husband and your three children for a lack of drugs, violence, and meaningless relationships. And reality is selling your body for your next fix multiple times. And reality is having a gun pointed at you, but being so broken and so ashamed of your life that you beg him to pull the trigger. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. Now, reality is reality is growing up in the unstable home and never having your father. Reality is having a blow with your father, friend, and murdered and never having a Reality is being shot two times while being pregnant because of your reckless behavior. You want to know how that's reality? Is that reality is now? Do you want to know what reality is? Reality is being married to an abusive bitch for 18 years and too afraid to tell anybody because of the position that you're in. In reality, it's feeling so unloved, unworthy, and unwanted that you spiral down the hill into a sexual addiction. In reality, it's your last marriage being so dangerous and toxic that the very gun you use for protection is the same gun you tried killing yourself with just to escape the pain. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. You see, even though we all have different realities, we have all been changed by the same truth. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if any man be in Christ, Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old is gone and the new is here to stay. And the truth is, I don't even know who that girl is anymore. And the truth is, the love of God covers a multitude of sins. And he is restoring back to me the years that the locusts have eaten and I am getting my family back. And the truth is, the darkness is fading and the true light is already shining because I know that the joy of the Lord is now my strength. Amen. Amen. Transform us 
into whom he designed us to be. As we share its solid testimony, the voices that you hear today, they are voices of true victory. At this time, the ladies are going to introduce themselves and share with you a scripture uh, that suits them at this time of their life, and I will start. My name is Tina. I'm 44 years old. I'm from Cornwall, Tennessee. I've been in the program 11 months now, and the scripture that I stand on is Revelation 12:11. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. Amen. Hey, Sharon, my name is Jessica. I'm from Boone, North Carolina. I'm 28 years old. I've been in the program for 11 months as well, and the scripture that I stand on is Revelation 12, 11. I'm going to read it out loud, and then I'm going to read it from the Both of my children, uh, they are 7 and 12, their names are AJ and Peyton. 
Um, he is strengthening the relationship between me and my mom every single day, and he's even working on the relationship between me and my father. Um, and before Thanksgiving, we have not spoken in about two years. Um, so I'm very excited to see what God has in store for me. Uh, I'm very thankful for this program because God definitely has used it to change my life. Um, and I thank y'all for letting me share. Coming after me. There's no shadow you want. 
an 86% success rate among Teen Challenge graduates, and that is huge. Our pastor believes that the winning combination of number one, the Jesus Factor, and number two, the length of our 13-month program is why Teen Challenge is so successful. Usually our ladies, they start their day early with prayer time, reading of the Word of God, daily devotionals, and praise and worship. Some ladies that come into our program, they have never even opened a Bible before. This not only teaches them to dig into God's Word, but it teaches them how to apply that to their lives. We also believe in the, prayer of pra the power of prayer. We know that you cannot have a relationship with someone if you don't communicate with them. We have several different jobs that the ladies can be assigned to. We have the office where they learn business and communicational skills. We have laundry and kitchen ladies that learn to be good stewards of what God has given them. Um, we also have the classroom where the ladies study the Word and they accomplish 14 different group studies that equip them for now and for their future. They will also memorize 250 scriptures by the time they graduate the program. Once they graduate, they get the opportunity to enter for Teen Challenge. And after completing proper training, they are able to uh, transition into full-time ministry. During the week at 11.30, we pray over prayer, our prayer cards. At this time, our ladies are going to hand out our prayer cards. During this time of prayer, we don't pray for our needs, but we pray for you. So please, if you have a personal need, if you know someone that is struggling with addiction, or any kind of need, we encourage you to put them on this prayer card. Um, our ladies, they were actually on some of these prayer cards uh, in church services just like this. So uh, we're going to give you guys a little bit of time to fill these out. Uh, we have pens that uh, they're going to pass out as well. And so when you're done, just hold them up and we'll take them from you. And if you don't get through filling it out, you can give it to us after the service.
turn it into us after the service. We'll be glad to get them from you guys. Um,
to my family, uh, the life that I always wanted, I, it was just, I was just miserable. So when I went to jail, um, I just began to pour my heart out to God. I was raised in church, but I did not know how to have a relationship with God. I knew about God, but I didn't know Him. And uh, my family, go, they, go, they would go to church on holidays, they would go on Sundays, but it wasn't like, uh, that's just because you we were supposed to do that. They didn't really teach me how to have a relationship or how to depend on God. And so uh, here is where I really started to call, call out to God was in uh, this, at the jail cell. And I want to just tell you what, God blessed me in jail. I had two spiritual mentors. I had chaplains that uh, they just poured into me. And God began to open my eyes spiritually. I began to see things that I'd never seen before. And uh, I had high hopes uh, when I got out of jail that I would have the life that I always wanted, that I would be, uh, I would be changed. And, but I still didn't know how to completely depend on God. And you know, that's easy to say when you're in beside those walls because it's easy to do it in there because you're not faced with the pressures and the challenges of life. So when I got out, um, I was faced with the wreckage yeah. and the mess that I had made of my family and of my life. And instead of turning to God and leaning completely upon Him, I fell underneath it because I tried to do it myself and we cannot do anything in our own strength. So um, I fell back into addiction and this time it was so much worse. If it could, if I, I didn't think it could get worse, but it did. And instead of, um, I, I, I isolated completely from my family. I was so ashamed and I devastated them. They were, uh, they were completely crushed. So I stayed away. They didn't even know if I was alive or dead. I was homeless. I was in and out of jail. I was in and out of mental institutions. But during this time, when I was going through this, I would go into a food ministry. There was a pastor in his life, I've got chills right now. I would go into there and they would show me the unconditional, judgmental love of God, just like you show me, Pastor. Whenever you come in those doors, they did not care what kind of shape I was in. They did not care. They loved me. And she began to uh, speak life over me. She, this pastor, she told me, she said, Tina, the Lord has plans for you to prosper you to give you a future and a hope. She was planting seeds of hope inside of me when I would go in this ministry. And uh, I would still go back out, though. I would let her love on me, and I would get filled up. And sometimes, y'all, I would be back out there on the streets, and I would think, if I could just get to church for five minutes, I'll live another week. That is how desperate that I was. But And so I would go, and it wouldn't matter. She would still love on me. It wouldn't matter if it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I could call on her. So, uh I had, like I was telling you, that I have uh, four boys and a girl. I have a 19-year-old son. And I had got word that he started using drugs and going down that path. This was my breaking point. You never know what God will use to bring you to a place of complete surrender. I heard that, and I was like, I cannot take it. I couldn't take for my children to go down the same path. I wanted them to have the life that I started to give them. And I knew that God could give it. So I called this pastor and I told her, I said, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Um, I'll be accountable to you wherever you tell me to go, I am going. And um, so we began to pray and she told me about Teen Challenge. And she'd already sent another girl to Teen Challenge that she graduated six months ago. She's still um, in there uh, at, at Teen Challenge now. She's on his staff. And um, so I walked through the doors of Teen Challenge in July of last year. And my life has never been the same. God. It's done amazing things in my life. My son that was going down that road uh, of addiction, he has come, uh, he's made a complete circle of his life. God, it's only because of God. He's in recovery now. He had a girlfriend that was pregnant, and this baby should have been born addicted to heroin. Boy, she is healthy. Boy, yeah. She is in recovery. Uh, the little girl, uh, his girlfriend is in recovery now. Uh, they had to go to jail. She didn't, but my son had to go to jail. And... Yes. Thank you. And also, praise God. And so, I just began to pray for Tucker that whatever, I wanted him off the streets. I didn't want him on, on that path. And it wasn't long. It was about a week, I guess it was. He went to jail. So, that really started um, his God being able to deal with him. He sent me a letter. And the letter said, Mom, um, he was actually got in trouble while he was in jail. He was in the hole. He said, Mom, all, I, all I've got time to do is make gratitude list. So I was so thankful for, for that. So God began to just work on him. But he's in recovery now. I have a grandbaby that's five months old. I haven't, I haven't even got to meet her yet. So I'm so excited. I get to go home and ask. The end of this month, so I'm going to get to meet her. And God is just doing amazing things. 
He is breaking those generational curses through me uh, coming and staying obedient and being in God's will and letting him change me and disciple me in the things that I need. That's what this program is given to me. I'm able to uh, have the tools to go back out and I know that I can do it because if I depend on him in his strength, I have a relationship with my family now that I never thought that I would ever have. So if God is slowly restoring the relationship with me and my other three children, their dad has custody of them and I, I haven't talked to them in years. And so I've talked to my son, he's 15, his name is Ross. I've talked to him twice in the past few weeks. He's sending me pictures. So slowly, God is restoring them back to me. And had I not come to Teen Challenge, that may not have ever happened. I would have still been out there in a mess and my children could still be bound. But through this, I know God is delivering them and setting them free. I don't know what God has got planned for me. I graduate in August. But I know that it's in ministry, and I know that I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony by telling what I was in and what God has brought me out of. So I just want to give Him glory, and I thank you guys for letting me share.
people out of the darkness to lead them into his glorious light. If the Lord is laid it on your heart to partner with us to see the chains of addiction broken for generations to come, we have these available for you on our craft tag or just see one of us. I'll be glad to get it for you guys. Um, of course, we are a nonprofit organization, so we do not receive any state or government support. We also don't charge our ladies a monthly fee, but we do raise support by receiving donations for process like this one. Just like the pastor was saying, uh, we don't make a profit off of it, but it does take, we do, it does, we do need financial support. Uh, most of our crosses are made by students in the program and they are finished by hand. The making of our crosses is very much like what the Lord has done with us in our lives. At first we come to Him needing a lot of work. He takes us, He cleans us up, and He transforms us into something beautiful. So we always encourage you to get a cross or a plaque to remind you of His transforming power that you have witnessed in the lives of these ladies today. However, this cross is not for sale. It is for you, Pastor, for allowing us to come out and share with you guys. We thank you so much. Our God is rightly glorified, and we do have our table set up in there, like the pastor said. So uh, we're done. We thank you guys so much for letting us share. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> my, my own <laughs> I guess it, as you've already seen, we have. Uh, Cross from uh, last year when they came here. This will also be hung right up uh, to commemorate this year. Uh, uh, as we've heard the testimonies that we've heard today, and as uh, our sisters have set an example for us about how the devil will try to pull you further and further and further in a direction that's away from God. And see, that's why we train as disciples. I heard something said yesterday uh, at our open house that stuck with me, and uh, I'd like to uh, say that that is something that uh, all of us are real familiar with, is being right up close to that edge, hit a nail, we feel like we've hit rock bottom, they just ain't getting up. So there's a lot of us familiar with that edge of the pit of hell. And we know the way that got us there. So we know the way to that pit. And there's a lot of us that God could use to go right up to the edge of that pit and pull others out. Amen. Amen. Because we've learned about the strength of God. We've learned about what God can do in our lives. And uh, sister, if you would come back up, uh, we also have something for you. Uh, this month, uh, we had decided that what we take up in our church collection uh, would be uh, given to Teen Challenge. And uh, the way that we do our offering and the way that we do our prayer requests is uh, we have an ammo box back there that's attached to the wall. We don't pass collection plates here because we feel like that should be done in private between each person and God. Because we do want to reinforce with everyone that each and every one of your relationships with God is between you and God. I can't have the same relationship with God that you have. Uh, but we can all have a relationship with God in our own way. And that's how powerful our God is. Uh, and I, I'll still have to check the box back there for, for what we've got today at the end of the service before you leave. So if you'll see me again. But this is what we collected this month, and we're able to present a team challenge with a check for $300. Wow. Uh, we, we know that $300 in this world doesn't go a long way, but it is more than we were able to get last year. And we do try to, we do want to try to have this with our anniversary every year. We, we discuss that, and hopefully next year it'll be even more. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So 
So what's up now, Pastor? Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ready to eat. <laughs> There's a rumor. There's a rumor going around that bikers love to eat. For some <laughs> and we, we prepared you guys a meal. Uh, we have heard, and, and what I've learned this year, uh, well, what I've learned this month is uh, when Jesus rose from the dead, there was a cloth that was placed over Jesus' face. Uh, face. Well, when they went back to the tomb and uh, saw that Jesus was gone, they seen Jesus' uh, garments there, that, that what they covered him with. But the cloth that was used for his face was folded up and put neatly to the side. In Jewish traditions, what that means is if you go to someone else's house and they receive you and they, they, you have a good meal and uh, you enjoyed that and you plan on coming back, they neatly fold their uh, towel up, the was napkin. It napkin. They neatly fold their napkin up and they leave it sitting in the chair. Uh, and that was one of the things that, I mean, it's just something that to me is often awesome to sit there and say, okay, well this is a little tidbit out of the Bible when we dig deeper into it, we find out that this cloth was folded up neatly and placed to the side where Jesus said, I'm coming back. Amen. 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 And Amen. every one of us that receives him, going with it if we're not already there first. <laughs> Before we close and go to eating and say the uh, lunch prayer, I would like to tell everyone here that the testimonies that you heard today were real. Uh, the struggles that these young ladies have had, I can say young because I believe I'm the oldest. <laughs> But uh, the struggles that these young ladies have had are real struggles. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I've uh, heard uh, through things like Teen Challenge and other recovery places. It's, uh, it's a word, court order. I know all about court order. I've been court order too. Uh, and, you know, to get court order for things, when you're in jail, a lot of us that have ever been there can say that when you're in jail, you're more concerned about what everybody can do for you or what everybody can get you there while you're in there to make you more comfortable. But then when you go from jail to a recovery program and you're on the path to being straight, you learn what you can do to reach out to others to help them and to be an active part of the ministry and to also take and uh, reach back out to your family. So you learn through recovery that even though you deal with the problems you deal with, sometimes it's not all about you. It's about what you've done to your families, or it's about what you've done to, uh, to your friends, and things like that. The important thing to take away from all of that, though, is what these ladies have learned and what these ladies have gotten back to in their life and everything, is to know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. If you've been here today and you've seen the things going on and you have went down that path or you're going down that path right now and you need Jesus in your life, you got, if you've been here before, you know we don't make you come up to the altar. You can say these words to yourself or you can see us after the service you don't have to have a middleman take you to salvation. You say this prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I, need you. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. And I set Jesus in my heart as a Savior. It's that simple. Our church is not a uh, social organization. We're not a social status in the community, other than a lot of us feel like we don't fit in. But salvation is that easy to be had, and then God will take over in your life. We also have a uh, we also have a time in our service that if you need prayer, you're more than welcome to come up here for prayer. Brother Gene and I'll stay back while everybody else gets ready to eat and things like that, and we will pray for you. 
uh, through sicknesses or anything else. Towards the end of the service, whenever we're getting ready to get done and eat, is when I'm going to enter that uh, collection box. So if God has put it in your heart uh, to give any more, it's going to go straight to them right out of that box, right to these guys. So uh, whatever the case may be, uh, at the end when we get ready to leave, when these ladies get ready to head out today, I'll take what's in there and we'll hand that over as well. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, pray for our meal. Anybody else who wants to talk about salvation or wants to talk about something they need to be prayed over, uh, we can do that. Again. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful service that we had today, Lord, and for the beautiful singings that we've got to hear, Lord, and for the testimonies that we've got to hear of how you can change our lives, Lord, for the good, and Lord, of how you will stay with us regardless of what path we choose in our life. We can always come back to you, Lord. And you're always there with open arms, Father God. Uh, my, we just thank you for this food that we're about to receive. And Lord, we just pray that you'll let us continue to have our fellowship with one another, Lord. And, and that we can understand that through you, Father God, we are all family here. And Lord, we just pray that you'll just give us that, that family peace that we have in one another. To know that we're all working for the same goal. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.